In this problem, we want to find the equivalent mass moment of inertia of a gear train. We will do this problem from n plus 1 number of shafts and to n gears. Obviously, a real system maybe have a finite number of shafts and gears, maybe 3, 4, 5, but the equation that we will find will serve for any number of gears. So what we want to find is the equivalent inertia if we use an equivalent mass moment of inertia for all the shaft respect to theta which is the angular velocity of the driving shaft. Which is this one right here. Theta 1 dot. So when we analyze two gears that are in contact, right, and we say that the radius of one is one, R1 and the other is R2, the angular velocities could be related by the point of contact. So if we calculate the velocity of the point of contact P, could be calculated regarding gear one and regarding gear two. It will be theta dot one times r one, theta two dot times r, and we could relate then theta two dot respect to theta two one. We don't have the radius of the gears, but we are given the number of teeth. There is a linear relation between the number of teeth and the radius of the gear. Therefore, we can relate the angular velocity of gear 2 respect to angular velocity of gear 1 by multiplying by the relation of the number of teeth as shown in this equation. We will calculate the kinetic energy of all the components and so we add the kinetic energy of the uh, engine of motor and then we add the kinetic energy of each of the gears the mass moment of inertia is given for each of the gears. We are assuming that the shaft represent the elastic uh, portion of the problem. So all the mass is concentrated in the gears and the shaft are the springs. So let's do the velocity of each component so to expand that summation. Where first we have the motor and the gear 1 has the same angular velocity which is the one that we want to find the equivalent system so we write theta dot for the shaft 2 and shaft 3 will have the same they are related to the first one by the relation of the teeth then we have gear 4 and gear 5 which also have the same angular velocity that will be relating the shaft 2 and shaft 3 because the shaft 2 has the gear 2 and 3 and the shaft 3 has the gear 4 and 5. So as you see we here can relate the velocity of the gear 4 with the velocity of gear 3 and that also with the velocity of gear 1. And if we do that for every single gear, at the end, we can relate the gear 2n minus 1 with the gear 2n, and that gives us the relation between the shaft n plus 1 and the logged, which is the last shaft, the last gear, and whatever we want to move with our engine. So if we introduced all these values in our kinetic energy, we have that the motor will be the same, and then we expand the inertia for each of the shafts. The gear one has the same velocity as the motor, so we can put it in the same parenthesis. And then we have J2 and J3 have the same velocity. 
then the gear 4 and 5 have the same velocity that is related to the uh, velocity of the motor by the relation of the teeth and at the end we can write all these relations to the square and then finally we do that for every single gear and then we have the final gear, gear 2N and the load that have the same velocity. So we write here the gear 2N. Let me change here in the table that I did 2N as well because it's the gear not the shaft. So we have the load and then all the relations for the teeth to relate the velocity of the load regarding the velocity of the motor. We finally, all that is multiplied by the angular velocity of the motor, square, and then everything that is in our bracket is what is our equivalent mass moment of inertia. So we can write our expression for the kinetic energy as one half that equivalent inertia, mass moment of inertia times the angular velocity. And therefore, yeah, we were able to find the equivalent mass moment of inertia of the gear train.